we mostly discuss about the big data, right? So we realize how much big the data is in one point and even including the individual, the uh, device, the enterprise device as well as the any big uh, digital error. So we currently uh, such a uh, error as the error of the generalized size, enterprise, whatever. Okay, anyway, so big data. So we need uh, some uh, new approach to deal with the such a thing. So should support the partial failure support, the traditional system, even though they argue they can support uh, the vulnerable system for such a partial failure, but uh, actually the two story uh, we need really uh, for trolls system, uh, especially for the partial failure. Higher system failure, no way, the partial system failure. And also the in case the failure, that data should be uh, recoverable. Also, not only for data, but also the company itself should be uh, the recoverable. And also keep the consistency, unlike the relational database model, sometimes we lose some consistency in the data, but uh, we'd rather have the data consistency in our new system. Definitely it should be scalable. scalable. Even though we have the distributed system, error system in our traditional system, they are not linearly scalable. Sometimes the performance of the uh, distributed system is like the like that. This is the number of nodes and performance. The more node you have, the better, but sometimes not because of the complexity to manage and the algorithm in such a uh, distributed or parallel system. In our new system to deal with the uh, data it should be really scalable to oversee such a thing. So before that, uh, what was the old approach? to handle such a big data. So one is cloud computing. So who will have a time to discuss about the cloud computing? Cloud computing environment is not the old approach. Even like right now, we will be using the cloud computing environment to build the big data system. For so, the example of the such cloud computing is for the AWS, the Amazon Web Services. So probably you heard about such a web services. It's like the, we can use a computing resource as a service. You can purchase such a thing. As if you are uh, purchasing the, your clothes or the bike or daily product, so you can purchase the computing resource through the AWS cloud. And then what if we implement the big data system on top of such a cloud? Um, so who will use such an AWS to test uh, the big data system, specifically Hadoop system, and later, if we get the price. Okay. So I'm going to skip this part. So who will have a time to discuss about the cloud computing later? Okay. So these are the uh, examples of services. So we can the simply cloud computing is we can use the computing resource as a service and provide to the user. So user user uh, they don't have to purchase the real hardware, real software, even real this just uh, pay as you go. Okay, just pay as you use and still use the uh, prepaid plan, not the monthly plan. Because the 90% the of my daily life are either home or UV. Okay? So, which means I, have, I can have a Wi Fi that I don't need the data plan. So, in case I need the data plan, I uh, purchase the daily plan. So, it's one or two bucks a day in the T Mobile. Even though T Mobile is not so good for their coverage, but the it works. So I pay only the 100 bucks a year, really, for my cell phone, little corner. My daughter, she's 8th grade, she used more, much more than me. 
through. Like that, we can use, we can take as we use the democratic computing system. There are many others, so we, especially we will use the elastic network is more easy to, uh, so if we have a chance. Otherwise, you can do by yourself. After uh, we learn how to implement, how to configure the Hadoop system, so actually it's not very difficult. Okay? Just click, 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 then you will have the details. So, finally, we'll need to discuss about the, our the candidate to handle the big data system, which is called Hadoop. So anybody who heard about the Hadoop, probably all of you guys heard about the Hadoop. What is the Hadoop, by the way? It's the name of it's the name of a toy. So actually, the Bell Curti who uh, proposed and the implement the uh, Adam system in Google. So his son has the toy name is the Adam. It's an elephant. So he named his system by following the, his son's toy. Okay? So that is the Adam. After that, almost all the components in the Adam system or the head of software, they name each software or each component with what? Animal's name. So you will see high, or the pig, pig Latin, or the zookeeper even. You know the zoo? Zookeeper, the man, all the animal. So probably you can guess what is a zookeeper. Zookeeper is the software to manage the control entire Hadoop system, so like that. So they use, it's a kind of a tradition, they use the uh, animal name to name their new product in Hadoop. So, but Hadoop is the, he developed what? Maybe two part. So when we are saying the Hadoop, that is actually, a, one is HDFS, another one is MapReduce. HDFS stands for Hadoop Distributed File System. It's a file system. So you have the file system, everybody has a file system in your operating system. What kind of file system do you use? FAT 32 what is it? UFS, NFS, and something, file system. Why what is a file system? It's a software to manage file and data. It's a part of operating system. Sometimes you need to pay specific file system. You need to purchase. Or mostly it's included in the as a part of your operating system. Just like that. HDFS is another file system. So when we are saying the head of big data system, it's nothing special. It's just nothing but new file system on top of existing file system. You can use the FAT32, you can use NFS EX3, uh, EX4, EXT8. Uh, so all of them are existing file system on top of that. We install the HDF, new file system, but it's a distributed file system. We will use the file system. We do not change anything for the operating system. We do not install any the memory management, no, nothing. Just file system. It's a new file system. Coded by what? Any head component, head of software, head of system, coded by Java. So they are using Java virtual machine, okay? Which means they can communicate. With. What is the benefit of the Java virtual machine? Who are the virtual machine? Yeah. It doesn't depend on the specific platform, specific environment. Okay, it's a virtual machine, it's a Java virtual machine. As long as you have the Java virtual machine, it can be run in any place, right? So that's the benefit of using the JVM. So they are based on the JVM. Each software, each 
the process used the, therefore Java virtual machine so they can communicate ETR between uh, the Java virtual machine. And another part of the pattern is the map reduce, map reduce. So using HDFS, you can the put the big file, big deal, okay? Whatever that is, we don't know yet. So we will say how to distribute the file using the HDFS. Then, suppose that we have a big file uh, on top of using the HDFS. Eventually, we need to use that file. Right? How to use? So, for example, I need to analyze. I, I need to search certain data. I need to do something at the time you can use map reduce system. Map reduce is a kind of programming environment, programming system. Based on what? Java. So using Java program, you can use the map reduce. It's a very high level distributed and parallel programming system, which means even though you do not know how many nodes you have, how the data are distributed, don't worry about it. You can just code, okay, read this data or find, count the number of words, then map reduce system will take care of everything. It's an asset, very high level asset. That's the benefit of the user. Story. That's the one of the problem in all the systems. In all the distributed and parallel programming environment, the user should know, even the computing aspect, how many know, and algorithm should be parallel. But in this map reduce system, we don't have to worry about it. So these two components are main part of the Hadoop. So when we are saying the Hadoop system, or big data system, or Hadoop big data system, that means HDFS file system. And the map reduce is a system for parallel programming. So, history actually Google. We have we talked about the what's the Google is, right? Google is a search engine. They need to collect all the web page in worldwide, it's a huge amount of the data. And they collect them so they need to index by a keyword or a search word, then use it. The problem is since the core number of websites are too big to manage, so they need to have the new file system that is called Google File System. One of the main uh, the developer and manager was the job colleague who invented the head of system. Okay, so I'm not going to explain about the details of the Google file system, but you can find all the information. Actually, the Google file system is a father of the head of HDFS. It's so almost, not almost, it's a, the basic the architecture are the same, exactly the same. So it's a good idea to understand the Google file system first and understand the HDFS. So, it's your first homework reading assignment. Read that this paper is already linked in the class website. It's a Google File System. Then, the summarize. Okay? I don't expect uh, for you to the new idea. Don't no, just try to understand and summarize. And submit to the cameras. Then, uh, today we will uh, directly talk about what is an HDFS. Okay? Instead of the Google File System. So, the core head concept is it should be very high level for you. Okay? If that is difficult, so nobody wants to use that program. That's the same problem as the traditional system. And also, anyway, so when you implement the uh, head of uh, big data system, it's also cluster. Cluster means there are a bunch of them, group of them. Okay, this is called a cluster. One of the big problems of the traditional system is when you have the, the, the more node you have, that doesn't guarantee the linear, the performance 
Parameter One of the reason is it's more complex. Okay, and you have the many. They need to talk to each other. So in our head of system, we need to minimize such a communication between or among the two. Okay, that's another one. And also data is spreading up, uh, among the machine in advance, which means when we that's why the distributed system with one file should be distributed and also multiple counties to support partial failure that we discussed before. So based on this, uh, the core concept Suppose that we are building the new uh, system to handle the big data. First thing is using the first, what is the block size? What is what? What is that block size? Block is what is the block size? It's a basic unit of processing. Okay? So for example, operating block size is what? It's a basic unit of transfer. So for example, 512 byte is the operating block size. So in case you need to access the data, even though you need to access one byte of data, entire block that include that one byte will be transferred. Like what about the data block size in database? That is also basic unit of processing. So when you search the data from the database, even though you have you need to access the name, only the entire block should be processed, transferred to the memory, and that will be the uh, memory block size and so like that. The bigger is the better for the data block size. It depends. So when do you need the bigger size, smaller size, small size of the block? When you need fast response time. So you you know the what is the response time in operating system? What is the response time? Response time is the time period between first execution and first response. Okay? It doesn't have to be the completed process. Just a first response. That is the response. When do you need the fast response time? Your online transaction, like the banking system or the thumb market system. At the time you need fast the response time. At the time you need smaller size of the block. By the way, when do you need the bigger size of the block? Like the batch job. Batch is the opposite of the online system. The batch is the U1 higher throughput. Okay? Throughput means to complete the job. So we want to complete the job as soon as possible. At the time, if we are using the smaller block size, it will require a lot of I.O. This is the delay of the system. What is the I.O. weight in operating system? I.O. weight. I.O. weight. So in CPU, for the CPU processor, when you need to access the data feed or write the data, to anything, right? They need to wait until the physical computer returns the data. That time is called I/O wait. So to utilize the such a waste of time, you need to have a CPU schedule, right? So that is the I/O wait. So the more the more I/O wait we have, the less performance. So, how to address this problem in the big data system? You can have bigger size, much, much bigger than the normal of the database system. Database use 2 megabytes, or 2K, or 4K. 
64K is the longest one in relational database. Even in heaven system, we use a 64 megabyte or 128 megabyte block size, which means one block is so even though I need to access the one byte of data, entire 64 megabyte will be accessed. Because that's the smallest unit. Because it's, it's of the data, huge amount of the data. So in other words, the big data system, head of system, head of system is not good for online transaction system. Okay? Only so this is one of the common mistakes. So big data system is a general solution in our IT environment or our research. No. It's good for batch job or research you're handling big data, not like the online transaction process. Okay? So this is we need to have the bigger size of the block usually 64 megabytes. Okay? Or sometimes we can use 128. And also, the system should support a port format, which means in case one of the node is failed, still we, the other available node, the entire job or entire system should be available. Can move with it. How header can support such a partial for uh, for followers? Yes. Yes. It's not like a cluster environment. It's not like what cluster environment? Uh, you mean the traditional cluster environment? <coughs> yeah, because cluster is create environment that if one of the uh, terminal fails or something like that. Mm -hmm. Oh no, it's a different method. Uh, it will not, uh, not fail because yeah. it automatically transferred to another computer. Mm -hmm. No, it, this is, as I said, the head of system is software lab. It's not hardware lab. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a file system and this is a system program. It's a system for program. Simply program and the file system. They will support this lab, five system level to address the problem of the fault problems. We will see how that they do it. That, that is different from the traditional cluster system. They usually use something back of line or a work line to, in case of the partial failure, but this one is kind of software level. We will see. So this is the landscape for the big data. And almost every company in IT, the industry, they said they can support big data, something like that, right? One of the irony is even Oracle, they said they support the big data. So you know the big Oracle is one of the biggest company. Uh, it's the least market share in the BBMS the industry, so because actually the because of the such a big company in database, the database technology has not been improved at all. Think about the programming environment. Are you using the Fortran or C program? No. You are using C++ or most of you guys are using object-oriented What about the model? It's a UML yeah, modeling, yeah. or use case modeling, right? So still, so you are using the object oriented concept for modeling, software engine. What about the database? So did you take my course, the database design? What did you learn? So relational model. Yeah. Relational model is <coughs> simply a very strict and very old fashioned the data model. It cannot support even the nested the table. It cannot support the multiple, which is easy in object-oriented concept. So data model is 
the old version is not object oriented, all the other even computing architecture are object oriented. Because of that, okay, context is hard to manage the DBM system or database. So why we cannot move the relational model to object oriented data models in database? There are other difficulties here, yeah, actually. However, the most uh, the harder is the vendor. The Oracle information DB2, they don't want to be risky. If they change the basic concept into the object oriented, their market will be mixed up and uh, it's a new, new the opportunity and something like that. It's a new risk for that the company. So they don't want to change the company. Yeah, they, they want to keep their time. Okay? So, but I believe the big data will change something. So you can see that even the relational database company, they said that they support the big data system. It's totally different data after the data structure. The big data system is unstructured or semi-structured. Relational model is the very strictly, strictly structured data model. They cannot be mixed actually, but they try to make the something business model. It's a kind of iron. But that, on the other hand, that means the big data is a big issue in IT and big opportunity also. So each and almost all IT company, they uh, are thinking about how to use the big data for them. This is a uh, headed big idea. idea uh, they put the content headed system uh, for their uh, big data in their big data strategy. And later, even Microsoft, they try to use the Apache header for the cloud <coughs> service. Okay. Even the uh, MS operating system, Microsoft, they are thinking how to utilize the header for their big strategy. EMC is a storage box, storage company. They also think about how to use the big data. Okay. So, this is the overview of the head component. So, in plus these two basic components in head the HDFS and the map reduced, there are more components. based on the Hadoop, okay? This is called Hadoop Ecosystem. The Hadoop Ecosystem, because we are using name of an animal, so it's an ecosystem, okay? Ecosystem is nothing but the big the picture, or big architecture of the Hadoop in the system. So, there are some examples we will see one by one in later, but this slide shows the overview of the such a header ecosystem. So, also in this slide shows us some the brief history of the header ecosystem. Now first, Google realized they need to new the system to handle the big data. So it's for the large Project. Large project it is the search engine project for huge amount of the web page. So at the time they realized they need to use the, the system to handle the huge amount of the web pages. At the time they developed the Google file system that is the father of the Hadoop, the HDFS file okay. system. So then this is the Hadoop file system. Using that file system, we need to process, okay? We need to analyze the such a collected data, okay? So because of that reason, we need some easier 
way to process such a data that is called the map reduce. So these two map reduce and HDFS are the core part of the Android system. Then these data are these data are stored at the HDFS and can be processed by the map reduce sometimes. We need to get the data from existing data source. Okay. So, for example, we build a header system. Okay. That include the HDFS and map videos. But they are images to something other source. For example, log data. And also, I relational database. They, you want to work with the existing data source. This is unstructured, and this is a structured data source. At that time, you can use from this unstructured data. From is the software to connect unstructured data and Hadoop system. And also, in case the structured data and the relational database, at that time, you can use a school. Using school, the flow, you can use the header system for relational database. Okay. Then, after you build such a header system, we can use the map to use programming. But as you may realize that next week. The first time, the map reduce programming is not very easy way to use the uh, Hadoop system. So, is there any way, easier way, to use the such a map reduce programming? On top of this, somebody developed very very high level language interface. It's nothing but interface. Okay. So, for example, what is the easiest program? that you learn so far. I think the SQL is one of the easiest languages, right, to access the data. But it's a structure. Python is another one, yes. So you can use the Python to implement the uh, map reduce program. So can we borrow the interface of that to make the easy to put the big data program? So at the time, so there are several ways. One is the pig Latin, pig, and another one is the hive. Hive use the SQL stuff to access it. That does mean the head of is the relational model. No, it's the only interface, the programming structure. You can select from where, okay, at the time that select from where is converted to map reduce program or okay. what pig latin is the procedural language like a shell script so very very straightforward when you code the big data programming using the pig is automatically converted to the map reduce so people doesn't have to know about the map reduce you can use just the simple and very high level program language to access the big data Okay. Then, R S will be the number A, and first number nine. Here, oh yeah, here. So sometimes after you build a such a Hadoop ecosystem, you need to have workflow. What is a workflow? There are many softwares to support the workflow in the enterprise level, which means that uh, along the uh, course of the business logic, sometimes you can apply the, this component, then this component, this component. You need to manage such a workflow. So same thing in the health system. Not only just one map with this program, you have one of these, two, three, sometimes the, depending on the result, the map reduce 3, the map reduce 4, we get, you can manage the many map reduce 
programming using the walk program. Okay? And eventually you can monitor and manage the head, entire head ecosystem like the huge and so on. Okay. So this is the overview of the head ecosystem. Before we get into the details of the HDFS, today we will see the more in the HDFS. Then next week, the Tuesday, we will see the map reviews. Before that, what will be the opportunity? If we learn, if we use the big data system or uh, in the research or the job market or industry, what is the benefit? That's, I said the big, the benefit, for example, how can you use the big data for data analytics? One of the well-known examples is the Google Blue Trend. Let me show you the example. So this is actually based on the number of occurrence of the word flu used during the Google search chain. So for example, if I do it's very simple. They just count the number of flu as a keyword by state, by time. Then we can see each state has more upgrade in the flu. That's a very simple yeah. and that's reasonable and that's more accurate than the CDC data. Okay? So, for example, you can search. United States, the Korean Korean data, you can see the this one is January and February is a high blue season compared to the July and August. Right? Even though they do not check the old patient, they didn't uh, the investigate uh, the hospital, just using the Google search keyword, they can get such a trend. It's very, very accurate. Right? Also, even they can plan it. If they are a symptom of the flu, they probably type the similar symptom by some get sick, the COVID cough, something like that. If you can see such a keyword, probably the flu will outbreak the next few weeks. Right. This is the typical engine for how we can use the big data. Okay. So this is the uh, Google flu and also Walmart inventory management, another uh, well-known example how to utilize the big data. So Walmart, you know the Walmart is the biggest company uh, in grocery store and retail store. So they, if you can find something, the purchase tab, what consumer have, that can be used for a bunch of business. And also Amazon, 
for what you realize that sometimes it's accurate, sometimes it's not. When you project, why well, even though you do not project it, if you type the, if you search it, search IDA, they suggest similar thing, right? So recommendation system. Sometimes it's active, so you don't have to search again and again, just uh, click the suggest, suggest it. These are the typical examples of how to use the big data. How can they get the child recommended by They have a huge amount of history to project. There might be similar one like me, who search item A, B, and C. They eventually project A and interest in the item D. Then at the time you can suggest item D. For those who search item A, B, and C. It's a simple idea, but it works. Okay. So our paradigm of the data analysis should be changed. So probably in your science class, you have learned about what is the research. First, make the hypothesis, collect the information, and evaluate and prove such a high right? For example, or the item will fall down, right? So we can test a bunch of items and fall down, fall down like Isaac Newton, okay? And prove it. Then this is the theory. But nowadays, the data analytics paradigm of the data analytics is changing to the data grid. Just like the, this example, we don't know anything about the flu itself. What is the symptom? But just using the data, we can actually guess when is the flu season. This time. Okay. Probably in the uh, CDC, the Center for Disease and Control, they will investigate a bunch of things and collect the history data that uh, this year will be the this earlier blue season, something like that, but sometimes not like that. But using data driven approach, so this is a trend, so it's a little bit earlier than the previous year, so we can easily divide the blue season. That's the different that's the different story in even in the industry and the research. Last year, select 
the name and ID, something like that. But in big data analysis, the IT department, data from the data. So who will investigate such a data? So this year, the flu season will be earlier than suggest to the business department. That's the okay. So then we can focus on traditional approach. We can focus on the those who uh, purchased the flu island last year can analyze this part. However, in the big data system, who will consider the entire data? Okay? Entire data analyze the whole of this. And in traditional approach, we need to clean some part of the uh, some the unrelated data because uh, there is a topic that try to minimize focus on the only the data that are relevant to, to this. Sometimes it has unrelevant data. The final will be this one, but in big data analysis, we will consider all the data to process. Then our goal is to find such a, what is the relationship? What is the uh, relationship between processing blue island and their age? So if you can find such a full relationship, we can focus on the specific target for conservation. But in traditional analytics, the age group 18 to 6 will Purchase the flow aisle. Okay, that's the hypothesis. Then IT department will select such a uh, target uh, group and do the marketing. So that's the different thing. And also sometimes, what if there are new incoming the transaction? We cannot handle such a ongoing the data incoming the streaming data. Ongoing data, but in big data system, even we can uh, handle such a streaming data. This is an example of the uh, topics in big data research at IBM, but I don't think it's only for IBM, for general. So, you can talk. so first one is new variety of the data, so focusing on the different data source. For example, the social media data and network data, content media data, and machine or sensor data, yes. Professor, so we said that multiple data, multiple data to get what are the like, data formats? The real Where is that? Which one? No, no for what? For the big data, uh -huh. what are the yes. data formats? Data format, this is a good example. Yeah, it's so these are the text, text okay. data, but they can be, for example, the text and social media data is graph the data structure. And the network data is the loop data. Loop data has a certain format, like the, the time and date, and the machine name, and the event, some sort of So it's, it's a sometimes semi structure. Multimedia data is an image format, or the video format, but then the compression. The big data, do they process images and the videos? Actually, no. <laughs> so but there are research to apply the HDFS and map reduce to the one hand data. So it's only text? Yeah. Text file. Yeah, main, main data type is the text. Who yeah. you will see what? Yeah. And also, this part is a very interesting topic in the big data visualization. So for example, what is the visualization? Trying to visualize. Just, uh, just different way of representing the data. Right. Okay? So if I can, so for example, I think that is the good example. So for example, what is this? That sometimes we can use the map to nicely present something, idea, history, or something like that. It's the same thing in data. It's very hard to see what's going on in the relational database model itself. Even though we model the employee department and something like that, it's very hard to see real, the data itself. So if we can use visualization, 
So very easy to see, for example, This is the kind of example of the Google Visualization API. So This one looks like a graph, but this is a motion graph. And the, for example, the mortality rate, and this is the age, and uh, this is the uh, region of the nation. And you can see this is for 1960, and you can see something changing pattern, right? It's a different way of representing the data. Right? So you can see the S time goes on, the fertility rate is going to higher age, so it's better from here to here.